Hello and welcome to Twist List. Today we are looking at 10 old companies still in operation. Being a massive fan of Beretta and of its long history, I thought it might be fun to write my first list about some of the oldest companies that are still recognizable and in existence today. I found the research quite interesting and I recommend that further reading on any of these entries is quite enlightening. It should also be noted that there are a number of other companies that far predate the existence of those on this list, they are, however, less known than the entries found here, and may make up a future list. Anyway, I hope you enjoy and I apologize for any glaring emissions. At number 10 we have, Sotheby's. The history of Sotheby's may be traced to 1744, when the English bookseller Samuel Baker held his first auction, which featured 457 books previously belonging to Sir John Stanley. Baker sold the contents of Stanley's library for a pound 826. Sotheby's Holdings Incorporated is the holding company for Sotheby's and is now one of the world's premier fine arts auction houses. The ninth spot on the list is occupied by Twining's Tea. Founder Thomas Twining began one of the first companies to introduce tea drinking to the English. After setting up shop on the Strand in London called Tom's Coffee House, he began selling his tea. This gave him a competitive edge on his coffee house rivals, of whom there were many, and the company never looked back. Only bought by the very wealthy, his gunpowder green tea was selling for a price that is equivalent to 260 US dollars per 100 grams today. Interestingly, the original premises are still in existence today. Number 8 on our list is, Lloyd's of London. Starting his business life as the proprietor of Edward Lloyd's Coffee House in 1688, Lloyd pioneered the business of insurance. His coffee house was slowly recognized as being the place to obtain marine and shipping insurance. These days Lloyd's of London provides specialist insurance for everything from underwriting many of the world's insurance providers to space satellites. At number 7 we have, Sverius Riksbank. Commonly regarded as the world's oldest central bank, Sverius Riksbank first named Stockholm's Banco, was founded by Johan Palmstruck, in 1665. However, shortly after, the bank collapsed as a result of the issuing of too many notes, without the necessary collateral. Palmsrich was condemned to death, but later received clemency. On the 17th of September, 1668, the running of the bank was transferred to the parliament of the day. Changing its name to its current form in 1866, the bank has a long and interesting history. Number 6 on the list is, London Gazette. The London Gazette is the oldest surviving English newspaper, and the oldest continuously published newspaper in the United Kingdom, having been first published on 7th of November, 1665. It was originally the Oxford Gazette, as the royal court had at that time moved to Oxford to avoid the plague, but within six months, court had returned to London and the newspaper changed its name. The fifth spot on the list is occupied by, Royal Delft. The first factory founded in 1653, by David Anthonis was named at Porcelainfels, the Porcelain Jar. This was the first of 32 factories, sources are not sure of the exact number, however, by the end of the 19th century the business was almost non-existent. In 1876, Juice Thuft, a Delft engineer, bought the only remaining factory with the intention of restoring the old tradition of producing hand-painted Delft blue. Knowing that people had no more confidence in the older, fragile earthenware, he realized that he would rigorously have to change the technique. Together with Abel Labouchere, his associate since 1884, he succeeded in finding a mixture of clay that resembled the stronger, white English earthenware. From then on, they produced a product that obtained worldwide fame. As a token of appreciation for the attempts the company had been making since 1876 to restore the fame of Delft and the ceramics industry in general, the predicate royal was granted to the Porcelainfels, in 1919. Number 4 on the list is, Fiskers. This present-day popular kitchenware, knife and scissor company had its beginnings as an ironworks in Finland. Over its 360-year history, the company has been involved in many endeavors such as farming tools, in its day the plow workshop produced over 1 million plows, steam engines and other agricultural tools. The famous color, Fiskars Orange, was officially registered as a trademark in Finland in 2003 and in the US in 2007. At the third place we have, Hague. The Hague whiskey distilling dynasty can rightfully lay claim to be the oldest Scotch whiskey distillery, having been active distillers for over 300 years. The first recording of Hague distilling was in 1655, when Robert Hague was summoned to appear before the Kirk session for working his still on the Sabbath. He had established a farm at Throsk, Stirlingshire, 
in 1627, and this is taken to be the entry date of the Higgs into distilling. The unique three-sided pinch decanter was the first three-sided bottle to be registered as a trademark in the U.S. At the second spot is, Grohl's, Counting Cliquey Grohl's BV, or Royal Grohl's NV, is the second largest beer brewer in the Netherlands. Although a bit player in terms of international beer volumes, with sales of just 3 million hectoliters per year, Grohl's has built a worldwide reputation as a premium beer specialist, particularly for its premium lager, which is sold in bottles using the company's distinctive flip-top cap. Founded by Willem Neerfeldt in the first half of 1615, Grohl's was first brewed in the town of Grohl, hence the name, meaning literally a euro from Grohl. Control of the company eventually went to his son-in-law, Peter Kuiper, and then remained in the same family for over 200 years before being bought out by another brewing family, and eventually becoming part of a larger corporation. And finally, at number 1. Beretta. Maestro Bartolomeo Beretta was a master gun barrel maker living in Gardun. In 1526, Bartolomeo was paid by the arsenal of Venice to make 185 arquebus barrels, making the Beretta company the oldest manufacturing company in the world. It is written that the bill of sale from 1526 is still in the company's archives. The Beretta family has continuously maintained control for the company's entire history. Ugo Gusali Beretta and his two sons, Pietro and Franco, still maintain leadership of Beretta today. Beretta's output is approximately 1,500 weapons a day, and covers just about the entire range of portable weapons, with more than 75% of its arms being exported to about 100 countries. Spanning now over 15 generations, this company has been a leader in its field for nearly 500 years. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more then please hit the subscribe button.